Hey guys, this is Sane here, and today we're going to take a look at the Naval Strike DLC. Now, the map we're playing on right now is actually called Lost Islands. It's noticeable by this big ass um, airplane that's crashed down in the middle. This is actually the levolution of this map right here. Um, I was trying to light that gas off with grenades. I thought you were able to do that. I don't know if it was just, you know, another battlefield glitch, but the C4 was able to do it. So I get a little fire off, and then check this out. Boom! The whole fucking thing just blows up, and you can actually get inside here. There is a, um, uh, one of those pick up off the ground, uh, what's it called? Rocket launchers that you can get. Um, I actually did have to cut that part out because I don't know if you guys noticed it right there, but it started glitching, which is actually a problem that I've been having sh with Shadow Play lately. Um, if you guys know how to fix that, let me know. But I've noticed that randomly during my videos now that there'll just be a bunch of cut up really choppy like low frame rate um, type areas but let's get back to what we were talking about in the first place the naval strike DLC so as many of you guys probably know the naval strike DLC was delayed it was supposed to come out on March 25th for PlayStation 4 Xbox one and PC as well as um, last gen consoles as well but it was actually pushed back for everything but the PS4. Um, now the PS4 and the Xbox One version still have a lot of rubber banding and what rubber banding is is basically as you're running forward you'll experience lag to where it pulls you back. Um, luckily on the PC version we have had none of this whatsoever and this to be honest with you guys is my most favorite DLC out of the Battlefield 4 franchise so far. It's amazing all the maps are very beautiful it's um it's not as boat um, when I, you know that it's naval strike you expect it to be a lot of just um, surfing around on boats and shit and just a whole lot of um, boat warfare as you can see right here this attack boat coming up there is still plenty of areas for you to have that but there's plenty of areas as well to just have infantry focused um, gameplay I know a lot of people were expecting this to be a lot like parasol storm because parasol storm look at that fucking helicopter that scared the shit out of me in the game I actually had to cut out my mic because I was freaked out I was on the uh, the MCOMs just or not the MCOMs but on the comms just saying holy shit this fuckers about to land on me but um yeah this DLC is by far one of the best DLCs or it is the best DLC in my opinion look at this map just look at this it's so beautiful but yeah, like I was saying, there's a lot of people who expected this to be a lot like Parasol Storm, which is it, it is in the um, in the sense of just island hopping a little bit. But in Parasol Storm, it seems like there's a lot more deep water to where you actually have to swim. As you saw me running through right there, that was all actually only waist deep, so I was still able to pull out my gun. It does slow you down a little bit, but it definitely makes it seem like a much more infantry focused combat. Now, even if you are in a boat, just because it's deep water, or if it's um, waste water, you can still go through that water. It's not like you're going to get beached like that. But um, if you do get beached, you know, they have the new knifing system to where you can actually knife the boats back in. You can actually knife the big ass attack boats in as well, but yeah, I really have to give props to um, to Dice for making a very beautiful map. But I am playing the new um, game mode, which is called Carrier Assault. As you can see here, once you get down the um, the enemies, you can see right there the U.S. and the Chinese um, aircraft, the submarines, not the submarines, the fucking the carriers. Um, you can see that they each have a health bar. The U.S. actually seems to have lower health on this, but what happens is you get it all the way down, and then you are able to infiltrate um, the carrier. Then you get a full another health bar after that. And so that's why the U.S., which is my team, looks like they are actually losing right here. Now here, right here, this was another part where the game started um, fucking up, so I actually just sped it up right there. I did get revived. I didn't want to just cut it out, but I didn't want you to just have to deal with that either. But, like I was saying, you do, once you get the, the carrier all the way down in health, it'll say a big message to pop on the screen for both you and their team saying your carrier is about to be boarded. Or if you're on the team who's going to board the carrier, it's, oh, their carrier is now able to be boarded. So then that what actually happens when that happens is um, there's a spawn point right above their carrier, which some people have actually 
kind of complained about a little bit. I know when I first started playing this, I was like, oh, that's kind of stupid. I can just, once I can enter in their carrier, I can just spawn right down on top of it. But it actually does work well with the gameplay. Um, if without, without that, I think it would become very hard to actually infiltrate the carrier. I think a lot more games would just end up um, the rockets going by themselves, just beating the shit out of the carrier. Because there are a points on each of, um, of the maps. There's conquest points that you can hold. And if you hold those points, the rockets will start bar berating the... Um, or barraging the the enemy carrier. That's how you actually get the health down of the carrier in the first place. You hold those objectives. Um, but yeah, with this way, it's much more. You either have to be attacking really hard on their carrier, or you have to be back in your base defending. Now, you as you can see right here. Here's a pro tip. Even when um, you can get through those big side doors up top or you can actually come down right here which always this part is open on the bottom um, and you can actually just take a boat in there and get a nice little flanking round on there after you um, blow up point A you can actually come down here those doors will open up after a few seconds and you'll be able to attack down to get to point B now there are certain points of the carrier on the enemy carrier that you cannot get inside um, this is due to where you can't just spawn trap the the enemy otherwise it'd be very easy just to spawn trap everyone in their carrier and then you could easily um, just blow up the ship there are only two MCOMs on this but the reason this is my favorite game mode by far not only is this my favorite DLC but this is also my favorite game mode um, I've always loved the rush and um, the battlefield franchise I feel like in battlefield 4 um, they they've even come out to say that they were not planning any of the maps for Rush, it was all very conquest oriented. So to have maps that um, like this with Carrier Assault that has both good um, conquest gameplay, but then also at the end you get this nice Rush um, kind of feel to it. It's really awesome and I really love it. As you can see, we just blew up their MCOM. Another thing that I do have, my only knock on this game mode is right here. Um, the game just ends after you blow up that second MCOM, which kind of sucks. In uh, 2142, which is what this game mode was based off, it was a game mode called Titan Mode back in that day, in the 2142 era. Um, you would blow it up, and then you would actually get like 30 seconds or something to actually escape off the Titan. And this, it doesn't work like that. You just automatically win the game. It just sees, I guess, just everyone dies in it. <laughs> I guess that's what happened there. But all right, guys, this is my first impressions of the Battlefield 4 Naval Strike DLC. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe for more videos like this one. Be sure to check us out in the next one and I'll see you there.